Hello everyone, it's Professor Rako here. Uh, this video today is going to kind of wrap up the first half of the chapter on accounting for income taxes, dealing with all of our temporary and even permanent differences, reporting deferred tax assets and liabilities. So this is just a little bit more of a comprehensive example uh, that we're going to roll through. Uh, so real quick, so I've done this before in other videos. I just want to, you know, do the shortcut I use again. So once again, if you take the taxable amounts, less the deductions, that gives you taxable income. I know it's a little small, but I don't have much room up there. All right, so if so, remember, taxable amounts is like revenue on the tax return. Deductions are like expenses on the tax return, and taxable income then is what we base our income tax payable off of. All right, so if we have more taxable amounts because of a difference, let's just draw an equals line here. If we have more taxable amounts, we'll have more taxable income. If we have less taxable amounts, we'll have less taxable income. That should make sense. If we have more uh, deductions, meaning we're subtracting more deductions, that number will be smaller, taxable income will be smaller. And then vice versa, if we're subtracting fewer deductions, taxable income will be small, I'll be, sorry, it will be greater. All right, so this is pretty easy to remember. And the reason I just kind of refer to this as my shortcut is because when you're doing the reconciliation, which is the most important step because that's what you use to get the taxable income, this, these signs right here tell you what you do in the uh, reconciliation. All right, I don't really have room to uh, write in up here, but each one. So this first column is like kind of like our unearned revenue column. Uh, the second one would be like installment sales. The third column uh, right here, uh, right here, will be depreciation, and then this last one was like warranty expense and accrued expenses. All right, and once again, uh, remember if we add it, it's a DTA, and I'll explain all this when we get. And if we subtract it, it's a DTL. All right, so let's look to this example, and then I'm gonna refer back up to this when we do our reconciliation. All right, so we have excess tax depreciation over book depreciation. That excess tax over books. So that means tax depreciation is greater than book depreciation, which means we have more deductions on our tax return. So we are in this column right here for depreciation. Okay. And the difference is 40,000 and it says it's going to reverse equally over the next four years. Okay. Deferral for book purposes of rent received in advance. So that's just unearned rent. All right. Yeah. Uh, it says that the rent will be earned in 2007. So notice it says deferral, which means we're not recognizing it on our books, but we are recognizing our tax return. So that means we have more income on our tax return. So that's going to be that first column right there. Okay. So that's going to help me in the shortcut. Now, look, we've seen these examples, these type of things in prior videos. The wording here is a little different, like this deferral for book purposes of rent received in advance. That just means we're not recognizing it on our financial statements because we haven't earned it yet. We'll earn it next year and that's when we'll recognize it. Okay. So we have our FI is 300,000 and then notice we have all these changing tax rates. So we look at that in the last video. So we know how to handle that. So it says compute taxable income for 2006. That's our most important step. The journal entry for 2006 will come from that. And then the journal entry from 2007 when things start to reverse out. All right. So let's come down here and do our reconciliation. So once again, keep this in mind right here. We're going to see for the unearned, we're going to add it. And the uh, depreciation one, we're going to subtract it based on the shortcut up here. All right. So when we do, so part A, so financial income was given as 300000 all right, we have two differences in this problem. We've got the depreciation and we've got the unearned rent revenue. All right, the depreciation was 40,000 and the difference for this was 20,000. All right, now once again, the most important thing here is which ones get added and which ones get subtracted. Well, we said that depreciation gets subtracted because remember, we have more deductions on our tax return, therefore taxable income is going to be smaller. So we need to subtract 40,000 more to make it smaller. The 20,000 is the exact opposite. We're going to have more income. So we need to add it to increase taxable income. All right. But once again, if you just learn that shortcut at the top of the page, this becomes very easy. This is going to be our deferred tax liability. We'll still have to put the rates to it. And that's our deferred tax asset. And then our taxable income is 280. So you have to be able to do this step in order to get taxable income, because remember, then we take taxable income, we multiply this year's tax rate. And so my income tax payable 
is going to be 112,000. All right, so once again, let's just scroll back up here. So I use the 40%, which came from right here for 2006, and then I'll use these other rates for the next year. And then once again, up here at the shortcut, we can see it all kind of on the same page here. All right, for the uh, rent was this one, and depreciation was that one, okay? So we can reason through that, and I did that in prior videos, so I'm not going to really walk through it here. Uh, but we know that it works because we've seen it work. Uh, and So just let that shortcut help guide you. Okay, it's okay to understand why and I kind of talk through that, but at the same time, uh, you know, we'll move ahead here with um, this example. All right, B is the journal entry. All right, so, you know, for our journal entry, oops, sorry. So, I mean, before I even really put numbers into it, I know I'm going to have an income tax expense. That's going to be my plug number, as always. I know I've got a deferred tax asset. I know I've got a deferred tax liability, and I know I've got income tax payable. All right, we already know the income tax payable is 112. We just calculated that. All right, so we need to kind of, you know, go through and calculate our numbers here. All right, so I'm going to come over here to the side and do my deferred tax liability. So remember, our difference was 40,000, and it said it's going to reverse out evenly. So in 2007, 2008, 2009, and 2010 is what it's reversing out. So it was a $40,000 difference. So that means it's going to be 10,000 each year. All right. And then what I'm going to do now, remember when we are calculating our deferred tax asset or liability, we're just taking the tax on the difference. All right. But when we have changes in tax rates, which let me scroll up, we can see those uh, right here. We have to do it the tax on the difference by year. Okay. So it's just one extra step. So let's get these tax rates in here. So that's 37%, 37%, and then the next two were 38%. All right. So it's going to be 3700s and 3800s. So 3700, 3700, 3800, 3800. All right. So that total is uh, 15,000. And so deferred tax liability is 15,000. Now, I mentioned this in a prior video. Some teachers may want you to do this where they you break up this. Uh, they would call this 3700 a deferred tax liability that's current, meaning it's going to reverse out next year. And then the sum of these three would be the non-current. Uh, you know, that's up to your teacher. Some will make you do that. Some won't. So just make sure you understand what they're looking for there. Uh, it's just one little extra step. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, but, you know, sometimes they want you to distinguish between what's going to reverse out next year, what's uh, going to reverse out uh, longer than a year. All right, the rent was 20000 and it says the rent will, up at the top there, the rent will all be earned in 2007, so it's all reversing out next year. So we just take all 20000 times the 37%, which is 2007's rate, okay, and that gives me 7400 All right, and then my income tax expense is a plug, and that is one nineteen six. All right, so part C now asks for the journal entry for 2007. So let's, what I was looking for is that we're going to start reversing some of this stuff out. Okay, now notice here we don't ha have to do a reconciliation. So if you look back in one video, I did another reconciliation in the second year, that Roland example, which is one of the video, the third or fourth video. Uh, I did a reconciliation in the next year, but that's because we didn't have taxable income. Notice this tells me taxable income. Right. So it's giving me the answer to the reconciliation. Therefore, I don't need to do the reconciliation uh, to get income tax uh, payable. All right. So my journal entry, without even looking at numbers, I'm going to have income tax expense. I'm going to be reducing a deferred tax liability and I'm going to be reducing my deferred tax uh, asset. And then I've got income tax payable. All right. So the income tax payable. So remember, it's taxable income, which was given here times 2007's tax rate, which is 37%. So that gives me 12250. All right, so the DTA that we created up here, 7400, is all reversing out this year. All right, for the deferred tax liability, we're reversing out 2007's, so that's going to be 3700. And then this is our plug number once again, 123950. And if you have a teacher that wants you to distinguish between the current and non-current, 
you would then move this 37 to current and this the rest of this would the th two 3800s would still be in non-current but once again that's kind of teacher specific i usually kind of uh gloss over that a little bit uh, just because there's you know other stuff that i'm more concerned with them knowing uh, for this portion so just make sure you're always real specific about what your teacher expects out of you especially come test time all right so once again this is a, a good problem to ask you know i can throw in some permanent differences or something like that to make it a little bit harder uh, but the main thing is if you can do the reconciliation right here and get taxable income you should be in pretty good shape so i really stress this when i'm teaching it in class really put a lot of time and energy into understanding why I'm adding and why I'm subtracting. And then it, one of that just makes the shortcut that much easier to understand. Okay, so use that to your advantage. It will help you uh, come test time. All right, so that kind of concludes the first part of the chapter. The second part of the chapter deals with net operating losses. So we'll do a couple of videos on that next. Uh, but the you know a big bulk of the chapter is this first part dealing with these deferred taxes. All right, so hopefully you've got a good grasp of this material now. Make sure you go back and watch whatever you need to watch uh, to help you prep come test time. Uh, so I hope you're enjoying. It. Please subscribe to the channel. You know, share with any of your classmates that might be struggling in some of these areas, and hopefully it will help them out a little bit as well. All right, see you next time.